Assalamu alaikum, this is Junaid Iqbal. Uh, today, the purpose of our video is to discuss the particle nature of matter in the IGCSE chemistry course. So this is a demo video. We will be discussing the topics in a very short way. So let's come directly to the topic. So when we talk about particle nature of matter, so we talk about uh, solids, liquids, and gases. These are the three states of matter. So when it is kinetic particle theory, it means the movement or the motion of atoms and molecules. Atoms are the smallest particles of any matter. And when atoms are moving, atoms are moving, then it's the kinetic particle theory. We are dealing with the motion of atoms, okay? So when we talk about solids, so let's assume any piece of solid, like uh, it's your book, it's a table, it's a chair, and anything. So these are the smallest atoms inside that atom, inside that uh, particular solid, you know? So what is happening by the nature? You can see that uh, these particles are very close to each other, so much close, so that there is no space in between and there is no room for any particular particle to move between each other. So in that case, we say that solid has a compact structure, an extremely compact structure. And uh, no space between the particles. And because there is no space between the particles, but still the particles are in motion always. So there is a vibration in between the particles, you can say. In between these particles, they are just vibrating, you know, to and fro, back and forth, back and forth. So that is basically the phenomena of their motion. So kinetic particle theory is applied on that. Particles are moving, but they are not, they do not have the room to move from here to here. So they are just, you know, vibrating at their position. So this is regarding the motion of solids. And when we talk about uh, the liquids, so liquid, atoms are a bit, you know, a bit distant from each other. So they have the space to move from here to there. So that's why when we pour liquid in a jug, if a jug is very thin, it gets the shape of that jug. If the jug is that, you know, thick, so it takes the sh uh, shape of that jug. So wherever we put the liquid in, it will take the shape of that container. So that's the property of liquid and why it's happening because the particles are moving. They have the room to move to, to an extent as compared to solid. Solid does not have any room to move. Liquid particles have more room to move from one place to another place. So that is the difference between solid and liquid in terms of kinetic particle theory. So let's come up on, uh, on gas. That was the liquid thing. And the gas, well, the particles of gas are far distant from each other, far distance from each other. And that's the reason they move very quickly. Like at one, if you spray the perfume, you know, spray the perfume at one end of the room like this, the spray goes there. And in some minutes, it just spread from here to here. Why it's happening? Because the gas particles are distant from each other. They move, they move quickly, very quickly. And this phenomenon is called diffusion. What is diffusion? The movement of particles from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. So this is the higher concentration, the place where we spray uh, the perfume, the gas, there's so many particles here. So this is higher concentration. And when they spread out and go to all over the room, they are at the lower concentration. Like there are less number of molecules at those sites. So this is a difference in terms of particle theory in solid, liquid, and gas. Solid have a very compact structure, no room for more particles to move. Liquid has some room and gas has much room, you know? So this is a difference. I hope it's clear to you. Just moving forward. Uh, some phenomena in terms of particle theory in uh, liquid gas and solids. 
So when we are converting the solid to liquid, this phenomena is called melting. When we are converting liquid to gas, this phenomena is called boiling or evaporation. And when liquid is converted to solid, it is called freezing. And when gases are converted to liquid, this is called condensation. And similarly, when solids are converted to gases directly, that is called sublimation. Just a brief discussion of all these things. So when we are talking about melting, we are basically heating the liquid. And what happens? Particles move from the positions. They have the room to move now and they're converted into liquid. And when we are heating it continuously, at some stage, the particles will move, will have the room to move so much, move so much that they are evaporating now, that they are converted into gas. So that is the third stage, you know? And similarly, when there is a liquid out there, there is a liquid, and we, are, we have kept it in the fridge. After some time, its particles will come close to each other because of the low temperature, and it will be converted into ice that is solid. This phenomenon is called freezing. Okay. Similarly, there is a phenomenon called condensation. The molecules are way much from each other, like in the gas. What happens in the nighttime, in the dew? What happens on the glasses of our cars? gas molecules, you know, they evaporate back into our screen and we see the droplets of liquid on our screens. So that is an example of condensation. And when we talk about sublimation, it is heating a solid to a much higher temperature, more than 100 degree temperature, more than 100 degree, maybe, you know, 200 degree, 300 degree. So that is basically the principle of sublimation. Now just come to atomic structure. Now what is atomic structure? We talk about matter, atom, movement of atom. Now what is atomic structure? Atomic structure is basically every atom, like say sodium. It has a nucleus, it's called nucleus. It has some protons inside, it has some neutron inside, and it has some orbits. You can shell, say them shells. So basically the atomic number of sodium is 11. The atomic mass or mass number is 23. So when we talk about atomic number, that is equivalent to number of protons or number of electrons and mass number number of protons plus number of neutrons so sodium has 11 pro, uh, atomic number so number of proton and number of electrons are 11 so electrons could be arranged like one, two in a two shell, that's a max capacity. The max capacity of the second shell is eight. So it's like eight, five, six, seven, eight. And that, that makes 10. One is remaining, one is in the outer shell. And that is the weakest force between the nucleus and the electron. It can move anywhere. It can help in reactions. It create different reactions. So. Number of proton 11, number of electron 11, and number of neutron is mass number minus number of proton, and it makes, you know, 23, 11. So it has to be 
12. I hope it's clear. So number of neutron is 12. Number of proton, 11. Number of electron, 11. And number of neutron is 23 minus 11, 12. So this is how proton, electron, and neutron resides inside any atom. I hope it makes sense to you. Okay. So based on that, we have some bonding between uh, you know atoms. One is ionic, one is covalent, and one we will discuss metallic bonding. That's in the course. So ionic bonding. Ionic bonding, that is uh, transfer of electron. Sharing and, uh, sorry, transfer of electron. Like in the sodium chloride. So atomic number of chlorine is 17, sodium is 11. Sodium has 11 electron, it has 17 electron. So if you say it's 281, that is the weakest of electron, weakest electrostatic force, it can, it is unstable, it can go and contribute in the reactions. And this is two, eight, 10, and seven. So it requires one more electron to make it stable. So it requires one electron, it has one electron to give away. So it comes here and it makes eight and make it stable. So this is how it works. That is the ionic bonding stuff. A covalent bonding. Okay, ionic bonding is a very strong bond, like the salt, common salt we have. It has a crystal lattice structure, very strong. As we are discussing it uh, in a very short and summarized way, so I'm not getting into the detail. So it's covalent bond, come to the chlorine covalent bond, like the Cl2, Cl2 gas. Chlorine has seven electrons here. Chlorine has seven electrons here. Okay, so what happens? This chlorine shares it with that, and this chlorine shares it with that. So it it has eight now and it has eight now. Both of them shares and that makes it Cl2. So that is sharing of electrons. I hope that is clear to you. So that's a very short brief view of the particle nature of matter. This is, as this video is just for the demo purpose. So in a very summarized way. I hope you got an idea of some of the topics. I will come with some other videos. Thanks for uh, taking time. Uh, have a nice day. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum.